Hello and welcome to episode 73 of the Graceful Tangle podcast. I'm Amy Kate. I am so, so happy that you're here with me today to talk about all of my knit and crochet progress and designs. It's going to be a really good episode. I have many finished objects to share um, and then I'm kind of in a transitional phase recording whips and designs. So it's going to be an interesting episode. I'm going to be able to take you behind the scenes just a little bit on what I'm working on and um, kind of the brainstorming section of designing. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm excited to chat with you guys today. So don't forget to check out all of the links in the description box below. That There will be links to the show notes um, and then also all of the social media platforms that you can find me on. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. And then of course, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please go ahead and do that. I am so, so excited that you're here today. Like I said, it's going to be a great episode. So grab a beverage. I am drinking some iced coffee today. It is 1.01 p.m. on Sunday, October 3rd. I cannot believe we're already in October. September's over. That's insane. I can't believe we're in October. I really, truly can't. But it's going to be a good month. Fall is officially, officially here. I feel like September... You know, obviously, September 22nd was the first day of fall this year. Um, and so it kind of feels like fall at the end. But I feel like once we get to really into October, that's when it really kicks in and the season changes. And I love it so, so much. The fall and going into winter and Christmas and all of that is my absolute favorite time of the entire year. And I am so excited that it's finally you know, I have so many plans just name crochet wise project wise there's so so many things i want to be working on so like i said it's october 3rd it's a sunday afternoon it has been raining off and on today but it looks like it might not be raining right now i'm not complaining it's been a while since we've had rain um, and so we need it and i absolutely love rainy days but like i said i have quite a few finished objects to talk about today so uh, let's go ahead and hop into them Okay, let's talk about some finished objects. Oh my goodness, you guys. I have so many things to share today. So, first up, the biggest and the most exciting, I think we can officially say, is my Like a Cloud cardigan. It is done. It is completely done. I love it so, so much. It is the cardigan of my dreams. I am so obsessed with it. Oh my goodness. So... I started this project way back, I don't even remember the month, I want to say it was March, but it was probably, it was probably before that, honestly, I really, I don't fully remember, um, but needless to say, I started this month some months ago, and then spring semester of school just got crazy, and then right after spring semester ended, summer semester started, um, and so that was crazy, and then just on top of that, designing and working, it was just too much, so... I put this project aside um, just because I didn't have the time to work on it. It's a very mindless project, which is amazing, but it just wasn't what I was working on at that time. So, anyway, I really wanted... To, I think another reason I lost motivation, too, was because I knew summer was coming and there was no way I was going to be able to wear it anyway. So that kind of took it down a notch, too. But, anyway, none of that was any fault of the pattern or the yarn or anything. It was just my own personal time, management, skills, and... <laughs> all of that fun jazz but needless to say I set myself the goal during the month of September to finish it because I wanted to be able to wear it throughout the fall months um and September is kind of the perfect month to finish up something like this in Alabama because it is definitely still hot feels like summer for the majority of the month um but then once we get into like the end of October really is when the temperatures actually start to cool down a bit um so I'm going to be wearing this all the time and I'm so excited about it so I met my goal I finished it it was I don't even remember what exact day I wrote it down somewhere I'm sure I think it might have been Monday I'm not entirely sure but regardless I finished my goal completed it I love it so so very much so just a little quick recap for the very last time I used Sorella yarn um this is two colors from the cozy collection which was the fall 2020 collection that they released um the pink i held two colors together a pink mohair and then a green fingering weight base um 
The green is called On the Trail, I believe, and then the pink is called Netflix. I actually have a full fingering weight skein of Netflix in my stash, so I'm really excited to use that soon. Um, I'm excited to have a full pair of socks in just that color because it is the most beautiful pink ever. Um, anyway, so that's the one that I use. And then, of course, this is the Like a Cloud Cardigan by Hobie Locatelli. I follow the pattern um, pretty much to a T. I, did, I didn't do as much ribbing as she called for on the hem. I did 10 rounds for the cuff and then just 10 rows for the hem as well just so that they would match. Um, I just honestly didn't really want to do that much ribbing and I liked the way that it looked with a shorter rib. So that's what I did. Um, I did also do more decreases in the sleeves. Um, I can't remember exactly what stitch count I went all the way down to, but I think I added two full more decrease repeats um, based on what she calls for in the pattern. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's... I made the smallest size. It fits absolutely perfectly. It's oversized, drop shoulder. Let me actually take this jacket off or shirt, whatever we want to call it, so I can show you what it looks like on. I just love it so much. Now, I have not blocked it yet. I'm so scared to block it <laughs> because I've never blocked anything that was made out of mohair, I just, I don't want anything to happen, and I don't want it to get a weird smell either. I just feel like if I, when I've blocked wool in the past, it's kind of given it a weird smell, and I don't understand if it's something that I'm doing wrong, or, I don't know, it just makes me really nervous, to be honest. So, I have not blocked it yet, and it fits so good without blocking. I don't know. I will eventually block it, because it will eventually need to be washed, and I would like the sleeves to be a little bit longer. Um, and Natalie from Nitty Nanny actually reached out and said that I should make the leaves, sleeves a little bit short because they will grow with blocking. So I will show to compensate for that. So they're like bracelet length right now. And really I want them to be like this length. Um, and they would be because I'm, I'm like stretching it right now and they are perfect. So anyway, I will block it eventually. I just haven't quite figured out the best way to do that. If you know, if you have any blocking tips for mohair and fingering, please let me know. You can send me an email or put it in the comments below. It would be super duper helpful because I just really, I don't, I don't quite know how. But anyways, here's what it looks like. It's perfect. I will stand up. You won't be able to see all of me on the screen at once, but I love it so much. It goes past my bottom, just past, which is perfect. It's the exact length that I wanted it to be. Um, yeah, oh, I just love it so much. It's so, so cozy. So anyway, I'm very happy that it is done. I'm beyond thrilled about it. So I'm actually not working on any garments right now, which makes me sad. I love making garments, so I really need to start something new. I haven't quite decided what. Um, I have a few designs in mind that I would like to get started on. Um, and then I also, there's a couple from other designers that I want to make as well. So I don't know. We will see what I get up to, but I definitely want to start a new good garment soon. I'm going to put this shirt back on because it is super cozy. And while it is not really cold in this room, I wish it was. So I'm pretending that it is. It's not super warm either, I guess. I don't know. It's a good temperature. This isn't too heavy to wear. Um, anyway, so that is my first finished object. I do have a couple of more finished objects. So let's go ahead and talk about those. So first up, let's see. I have two pairs of socks that I have completed this week. The first pair is my second pair of Runway Moment socks. So this is a brand new sock pattern that I just released. Um, you can check it out in my Etsy and Ravelry shops. So I highly recommend that you do that because I love this pattern. Um, but I knit another pair using Knit Picks Stroll Tweed. And I love the way that they turned out so much. So these have a really beautiful um, kind of columned per se knit pearl texture and then an afterthought heel of course um and I just love the way that these turned out so I I think I had one finished last week if I remember correctly and then I went ahead and finished the second one this week um smooth sailing love the tweed they fit perfectly um yeah I love these I have quite the collection of hand knit socks and so I'm super excited to finally be in the time of year where I can almost start enjoying them. Not quite. It's still a little bit hot, but I did wear a pair of socks last night and slept in them, which I'm one of those people who usually doesn't like sleeping in socks. Um, 
anyway they were so cozy so I love them so much and I'm excited to wear them so yeah that's my next finished object and then one more fo I think just one I need to be sure to go ahead and talk about my show notes so that I don't forget anything um okay so this one is actually an exciting fo for different reasons so I started this pair of shorties specifically to film a video tutorial for the pattern. This is my Success Shorties pattern. It's the shorty version of my Success Socks. Super simple and beginner friendly. Um, I made the first sock months ago. Like, I think I probably shared it on the podcast, but I don't fully remember. It was a long time ago. And I, my plan was to knit the first sock and then film a tutorial while I was knitting the second sock. And I just, I couldn't find the time, couldn't find the time. And then this past week, I finally did that and released the video tutorial so you can now find a full video tutorial on my channel i'll link it down below on how to knit shorty socks i am so happy that's finally out as a resource to you guys um it has been such a long time coming but a lot a lot a lot a lot of time and effort goes behind making and creating video tutorials there's just i don't know i mean all videos take a lot of time but tutorials are special in the fact that you're making something on camera so that adds just you know a whole other element and then you have to be saying the instructions as well and editing is a nightmare it's not bad i enjoy it but it's a nightmare um so anyway a lot went into this tutorial so i hope you enjoy it but i finished this pair of socks i have the other one somewhere in this bin i think um here it is anyway so here's the second one obviously i'm only using one blocker right now but both are complete. This is Nipix Hawthorne Speckle, I believe, in um, like a dramatic speckle or something like that. I don't remember the exact colorway name, but I'm well. I remember it. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, that's as close as I got. But I love the way that these turned out, um, and they're super cute and fun. And it was perfect for the video tutorial purposes as well. So I'm super happy that they are complete. Um, another reason I wanted to finish those was because that was my last languishing whip. So, I am now, like, all set and ready for new things, new works in progress, new designs. Um, I do have one design that I put on hold because I went out of yarn, but I now have another plan for that same exact design. Um, so I'm going to be ripping out that first version, I think, and then starting a new one this week so that project will unfortunately be ripped out it's a bobble beanie if you remember it i love the color so much and my plan was to color block it but anyway i think i'm just gonna rip it out and use some different yarn and make the same pattern and release it and then i'll use that color for something else but anyway i'm now set and ready for new works in progress and i have gone ahead and started a couple so let's talk about those <music> Okay, so I'm only working on one thing right now that isn't a design, and that is simply a pair of vanilla socks. So, like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I am very much in a transitional phase right now with works in progress. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what to cast on next. Um, I have a garment that I'm itching to cast on, so I think that's going to have to happen. Um, and then I am also hoping to cast on a new pair of socks soon. Um, actually two new pairs of socks, one for October and then one for just a simple pair of DK socks to have on the go. So I'm excited to cast on all of those things, but this week has been spent doing a lot of designing and brainstorming, so I haven't had the time to cast on those yet. Um, so in this week's episode, my only finish, or my only work in progress is a pair of vanilla socks. So I am excited to talk about them though, because this is the most beautiful fall yarn. Oh my goodness. So this is the yarn that I am using. I have never heard of this brand before. Um, this yarn was gifted to me pretty recently. And I absolutely love it. I just can't quite figure out what the brand is. <laughs> so here's what the label looks like. I think it says on. And then I think this cursive word is live. Um, and then I believe it might be like a, a non-US based yarn. Um, but I think it's supposed to be super sock yarn. And then it has like aloe vera in it, I believe. Um, it's 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide, which is like nylon. So it's basically a 75-25 base. Um, I absolutely love it. I'm just unfamiliar with this exact brand. So I think I'm saying that right. I think 
that's correct. Um, I need to try to look it up again and find it, but I really love these colors for fall. It just seems like the perfect pair of vanilla socks to have on the go for October. It's got that mustard and golden yellow. There's a pink and a darker pink and then black. It's just really beautiful and I love it very, very much. Um, so I am knitting a pair of vanilla socks. I'm using my Success Socks pattern, which you can find for free on Ravelry in my blog um, or the PDF on Etsy as well. And I am using Nine Inch Circulars for these. So these are from Chiaogu. Um, They're my favorite. I love them. Size 1, 2.25 millimeter. Um, and yeah, I'm having a lot of fun working on these. So I just sewed them yesterday. And this is much progress. As in, this is how much. What am I saying? This is how much progress I have made. Um, so I just did a 20 round one by one rib cuff. And then I've just started the leg. Typically, I do a 20 round cuff and then a 40 round leg, but I'm actually going to make these significantly longer so that I can wear them um, just like cozy over leggings and things like that. I think it's going to be really nice. So I'm going to do between 50 and 60 rounds, I think, for the leg. I haven't quite decided yet, but I have plenty of yarn, so I might do all the way to 60. I'm not sure, but regardless, this is my pair of vanilla socks for this month. Um, it's self-striping, which is really fun. I absolutely love that. Uh, I just think they're so cute and fallish. Oh my goodness. I love them very, very much. So I'm excited to continue working on these and watch them grow. I'm having a lot of fun working with 9 inch circulars as well. My go-to method for knitting socks is definitely Magic Loop. Um, but I really like 9 inch circulars as well. So I've had fun using them. And yeah, I'm also storing these. I thought I would mention this bag because I really love it. This is a bag that I made, I think, last year. Um, and I sewed it. And I just love it. I think it's really cute fabric. Um, again, very fall. Very fall-like. Um, I need to make some more bags. I just haven't been able to find the time to. So, in a very long time. <laughs> Honestly, school and work and business stuff and knitting just keeps me very busy. But, um... I really, I love sewing bags. It's not something that, I don't know, I'll probably never do it for like profit or anything. I think it'll, it'll be something that I just do myself, but I really love it. And they're a lot of fun to make and very simple. The pattern I use is basic. So anyway, I am not a gray sewist by any means, but I can make a project bag-ish. I mess up, but you know, it's fun. I enjoy it. So I'm hoping to find the time to do that soon. Um... But anyway, that is the only work in progress that I have that isn't a design, but I am working on some new designs, um, and then I'm also brainstorming quite a few things that I want to chat briefly about with you guys too. So let's go ahead and hop into some design talk. Okay, design-wise, first up, I am working on a brand new beanie that I'm completely obsessed with. So I am using Knit Picks Muse which is one of my favorite yarns ever. Like, hands down, I absolutely love every single thing about this yarn. This is a single ply, heavy worsted or Aran weight yarn, so it's really in between a worsted weight and a bulky weight. Um, it's not quite as heavy as a bulky, but it's definitely heavier than most worsted weight yarns. So it's kind of in a category all by itself, um, which can lead to <laughs> A little bit of frustration just pattern wise because it's hard to find you know other yarns that are easily replaceable for it for writing patterns but um i absolutely love using it and it is so gorgeous all of the colorways are absolutely amazing so i've used quite a few i have a few patterns in my shop that are hats designed with muse um i have the comfort in the woods beanie which is a color work beanie the devoted beanie and then um, the faux brioche beanie as well. And that might be it. I think I think that's it. But anyway, this is a new one that's going to be coming out later this month. Um, I haven't quite decided on a name for the beanie yet. But the yarn is the Impulse colorway. And I really like that name. And it kind of also relates to the stitch pattern that I'm using that you'll see in a second. So I might name it the Impulse beanie. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked to see if that name is available or anything, so I'll be doing that first, of course, but I really, really love it. So, anyway, here is an up-close look at the yarn. I also posted about it on my Instagram feed over the weekend, so you can look at that picture if you want as well, because it will give you a good, um, a good look at it. But it is just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. 
very, very much. So anyway, I'm using this to design a new beanie. And here's what I have done so far. So I have completed the rib. I did a two by one rib. So I did um, two pulls, one knit, or knit one, pull two is actually what I did in the round. Um, and I absolutely really like the way that it looks. Um, I I don't know. I, I, I really like knitting rib, but it's also not something that I want to do a ton of. So I think that knit one, pull two was really fun to do. And I really like the way that it looks as well, even more than I thought I would. So here's what it looks like. Um, so this is the ribbing right here. And then I've gone into the stitch pattern for the body of the hat. And it's lacy and beautiful, but it also is really flattering for the heavy worsted yarn. So I typically wouldn't pair that lacy of a stitch with a anything above like a DK, I would say, just because it can be easily lost. And so you kind of have to just tread carefully when we're going lace and bulky yarns. I think it's so pretty. I love the way that it looks, but it just, you know, you wouldn't do the same exact stitch pattern that you would do for fingering weight for bulky weight necessarily. Sometimes it works. I think this one, it would work really well. So I'm actually hoping to design a pair of socks with the same stitch pattern soon. Um, but anyways, here is what it looks like right now. I'm, I'm trying to show you. I don't have a ton done, as you can see. So here's what the lace looks like. It, there, okay, that's a better view. So it's, it's, holy is like the least technical term that I could use. There's lots of yarn overs, um, lots of pearl two togethers. And then you maintain this knit stitch throughout, which I think looks really nice. So, anyway, I'm really excited to watch this continue to grow. Um, I'll definitely be sharing more next week, and I'll have a lot more done. So you'll be able to get a better view of what it's actually going to look like then. Um, but, like I said, so much time this week was just spent on solidifying the actual design idea and drafting the pattern. So now I'm just knitting it. Um, it's been very smooth sailing so far in the knitting process. And, yeah, I love it very, very much. I have lots of mini ideas coming up for the fall and winter season, so... Definitely stay tuned for all of those. So that is my first new design that I am working on. And then the second one and the only other one that I have started besides the blanket, which I'll be showing in a minute, um, is the Genesis socks. Oh my goodness, you guys. It's finally happening. So the Genesis Messy Bud Beanie was the very first pattern that I ever released. Um, I released it January 1st of 2020. If you're new here, I made it my goal to release a pattern every single week throughout the year 2020. Um, and I stuck with it. Obviously, 2020 was an absolutely crazy and insane year for everybody in so many different ways. Um, but that is one goal that I stuck with and accomplished. And I'm so happy about that. Um, but anyway, the Genesis Messy Bun Beanie was the very first pattern that I ever released. And it will just always kind of hold a special place in my heart, I think. It's just a really exciting pattern. It was embarking on this whole big journey that is just been absolutely amazing in so many ways. And I'm so grateful to be where I am design-wise today. Um, and so I am designing the Genesis socks. And I absolutely love them. So I don't have much progress because, again, <laughs> this week has just been a brainstorming week. Um, but here is what they currently look like. So I'm sticking with the mustard theme. All of my Genesis patterns in the collection so far have had a mustard theme. And mustard is like my favorite color. This exact colorway of mustard is my absolute favorite. Actually, okay, let's just be quite honest here. This palette right here is Amy Kate. And then pair this gray with my leggings is me in, I don't know, poor colors. So however many colors this is, this is, this is me. Anyways. Um, I absolutely love, 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 love this pattern so far. I'm using Nipix Stroll in the colorway Treasure, which is like my favorite color of all single time. I love it so much. But obviously I don't have much to share on these yet, but I'm very excited about this pattern. It's going to be so amazing and special. I'm going to have a lot more progress to share next week so that you'll be able to see the texture and all of that goodness. Um, but yeah. I am excited to be growing this collection. I am also hoping, so that's the sock that I'm currently working on design-wise. Um, and then this is another bag that I made also, just to throw that out there. Um, I really love them. Anyway, so I'm also hoping to start the bulky Genesis beanie soon. So that is what this yarn is going to be for. 
It's raining again. Caught my eye. I love Wayne so much. Anyway, so this is Nipix of Big O Bulky Weight in the colorway Can't See Heather. So this is the Mustard Colo for Big O. I was actually really wanting to design this beanie last year, but this yarn was out of stock for so long. Um, and I just had my heart set on this exact colorway. So I waited and it was totally worth it. Um, and I'm excited to start designing this very, very soon. So yeah, this is so soft and cozy. It's going to be amazing. So one more design that I wanted to show, and that is my blanket that I'm currently working on. Oh my goodness, guys, it's almost done and I cannot believe it. So this blanket has been an absolute joy to work on. Every single stitch has brought so much joy and comfort and excitement. I love every single thing about this blanket and I have gotten so, so, so many questions about it. So this pattern is releasing later this month. I can't wait to release it. I am going to have video tutorials to go along with the pattern. I have decided to release two separate tutorials. One that shows you um, like the actual process of crocheting this exact blanket. So I'll be doing individual squares in every color. Um, I'm not going to be, you know, making an entire blanket. It'll be like a smaller sample for the video tutorial purposes. Um, but that's going to be the first tutorial. And that's going to go directly along with this pattern. So whatever name I decided to give this blanket, that tutorial will also have that name. It'll be how to crochet the whatever blanket. I have not decided on a name yet. And then I'm going to also release a separate um, video that is just showing this technique, which is... Um, well, let's just be quite frank here. I'm still trying to figure out what to call this technique. Um, basically, I'm using slip stitches to attach squares while I'm crocheting versus waiting until after the blanket is completely done to seam them all together. That is not something I enjoy doing um, most of the time. I do have a few designs that want, I want to use that technique for, so I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be saying I hate it or anything, but I didn't want to do that for this specific project. And what I really want to try to make, what well, point I really want to try to make in that video is how you can use this technique in any project. You could do just like individual colors for columns and a cardigan, a sweater, a blanket, a pillow, anything along those lines. Um, there's just so many ways to use this technique and I want to try to make that clear in the video. So there's going to be two simple videos for that reason. Um, in that video, I will be doing a smaller swatch again. But I'm hoping to make a um, cardigan or a scrappy blanket or something in the near future to better show that technique as well. So anyway, here's the blanket so far. This week I did column number nine, which is over here. So I added all of these colors. Um, this was the end two. And then, yeah, just moving all the way down. I only have these two were my favorite, by the way. Like, I love those two colors together very, very much. Um... Anyway, so I have one more column to go. It's going to be 100 total squares. It's so big. I love it so much. And then I will move on to the border. So my goal is to have it done in the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, I'll be finishing up the pattern and all of that. And then it will, will, it will release later this month. So I'm very excited about it. Like I said, it's been a long time coming. Um, but it's just such a special design. And I want to make sure that it is the best it can be. So stay tuned for that pattern. It is coming, I promise. So that is it for design talk. I, like I said, am in the brainstorming process of lots of designs. So I will have more weeks in progress and more designs to talk about next week. Um, but until then, let's go ahead and hop into a devotion and life update. <music> So for devotional this week, I wanted to talk a little bit about chapter one of Colossians. So Colossians is a book written by Paul in the New Testament. Um, I have been going through this book of the Bible this week and so much of it, so much information, so many powerful statements and words and truth have stuck out to me especially. Um, and so I thought I would take the next few weeks of the devotion segment of the podcast to talk about each chapter of Colossians. And I want to encourage you to come along with me. So basically, um, Colossians is just four chapters. It is a very short book of the Bible. It is very manageable, but there is so 
much truth and power and just beauty in this book. It's one of my absolute favorite books um, of the entire Bible. I've read it multiple times and it's all marked up and written on and I don't know. It's really cool to go back and visit um, a book of the Bible that I have already read in the past again and just see like in the same Bible and see what I wrote the first time I read it or what I wrote the second time I read it what is sticking out to me now because often if I'm in like if I'm reading a specific book of the Bible again it's because I'm in a different season than I was when I first read it and so different things naturally stick out to me different things were on my mind in that season so that is definitely held true while I'm reading Colossians again and so this week we're just going to talk about chapter one and a couple of things that stuck out to me um, and then I want to encourage you to read through chapter one of Colossians throughout the week. And then next week we will talk about chapter two. So I thought it'd be kind of a fun thing to start. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, not going to go too, too deep, of course, but I just kind of want to touch on a couple of things that stick out to me specifically and that I would love to encourage you with today. So first up, uh, I wrote them in my show notes because I didn't want to lose track. <laughs> of what I was going to say. So you can read kind of the outline of what I'm talking about um, for the entire podcast, but for the devotional segment as well um, in the show notes, which will be linked down below. So be sure to check those out if you are interested. So the first verse that stuck out to me is Colossians 1 17. And it says he speaking. So this is Paul speaking, talking about Jesus. He is before all things and in him all things together, all things hold together, excuse me. So I'm going to read that one more time. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. And that verse has stuck out to me every time I've read this book, but this time specifically it sticks out a little bit more. And every time I read that, I feel empowered and uplifted and encouraged by the fact that even if I don't have the, all, all the answers to whatever I'm going through in that specific season of life, he holds it all together and I don't have to because he does. So often just in our society, we're taught that, um, you know, we're supposed to be independent and reliant on ourselves. And while there is truth to that, and while we should strive to be independent and responsible adults, it's also important to rely on Jesus for our strength. And I feel like there's so much power in this verse that it just says, he has before all things, and he holds all things together. And I just love that verse. It's simple. It is a straightforward statement. And I really love verses like that that are just, you know, simple, to the point, in with a period. I think they're very powerful and impactful. Um, and there's just a lot that we can learn from them. So that's the first thing that stood out to me. Um, and then the second thing, and this is something that I have talked about in the past on the podcast, but in verse 24, Paul says, now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. And there, it goes on to explain a little bit more and you can read along with that. That's just the first half of verse 24. But learning to rejoice in suffering is still something that I am just, just learning to grasp the concept of. And suffering can mean different things for different people, I have come to realize. You know, we do not encounter the same things in this life. There are so many things that others will go through that I will never experience and then there's things that I will go through that others won't experience and a big part is learning empathy and how to relate to others as much as we can and to you know cry with them and rejoice with them and all of those beautiful things and again I've, I've talked about that in past episodes um but this time that I read it specifically I kind of read it with new fresh eyes and what I have in this season of life, what I can most relate to rejoicing and suffering to is rejoicing in every season of life. So for a personal example, I am in a season of college, of working, of maintaining a business, of seeking new possibilities and relationships and learning where my, where my life will go in the near future after I graduate college next year. Um, and so in this current season, it is very easy to just become a little bit lost and discouraged and not knowing what the next step will hold and becoming frustrated or anxious or discouraged by that. And instead of taking those feelings and letting them sink in and act on those, I have learned to take those feelings and to combat those with what I know is true. And that is God has a plan. It doesn't matter if I don't have all the answers because he does. 
And all I am required to do is trust him and know that his plan is bigger and better than what I can ever imagine. And my goal should be to follow that to the absolute fullest. So for me personally, that means working hard in this season and to do all of my schoolwork to the best of my ability, run this little business of mine the best that I possibly can and grow in every way that I can and run it in a way that glorifies God. And then the same goes for this YouTube channel and every single social media platform that I have now and will future have will have in the future. Um, and that is kind of what I'm relating this to now. So whatever season that you're going through, whether it's a happy one or a difficult one or one that you are just beginning to navigate, I encourage you to learn every single thing that you can from it and to rely on God for strength and for joy and for every good thing because that's exactly what we're supposed to do. So that's kind of Colossians 1 in, the, in a nutshell and what has stuck out to me. Again, I encourage you to just read through it this week um, and then come back next week and we'll talk about Colossians 2. I know the Bible can be very overwhelming at times. It is a big book. It's a big book, but it is the most important book that we will ever read, that we will ever study, um, and I think it's important to not lose sight of that. You know, as a college student myself, and maybe you're in schooling of some type, um, it's very easy to become lost in textbooks and to study those, like we're supposed to memorize them for tests and things like that, and our life is kind of the test that we are being given in the Bible. We are taught so many things in this book and there are things that we are supposed to learn in this life and supposed to know. Um, and yeah, it's really important. So I encourage you to just start with Colossians or whatever book that you want to, of course. But in this specific moment, I would encourage you to read through Colossians 1 and just take the whole week and read through it slowly and take in as many things as you can. I am here anytime. Please don't hesitate to send me an email or anything like that and we can talk about it. I can answer any questions that I can. I am 100% imperfect, <laughs> but I've learned a lot in my 19 years on this earth and I'm excited to keep learning and to keep encouraging you all and inspiring you all in every way that I can. So anyway, moving along into a life update, it's been a good week. It's been a crazy week. Um... Lots of work, lots of babysitting, lots of business stuff. Um, I have a couple of exciting patterns releasing this week, so lots and lots and lots of preparation has gone into that. Um, let's see, what else? Brainstorming, of course. I know I've said that a lot, but basically I have just spent a lot of time um, kind of coming up with new pattern ideas and choosing yarns for them and doing math to figure out all of the logistics behind those designs and drafting patterns and grading patterns and coming up with pattern layout ideas and things like that. It's been a lot of computer work. Um, I also submitted some designs to a company earlier this week. So if you want to send some good vibes or anything along those lines my way, I would love it because I am truly hoping that one of these gets accepted. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of anxiety that goes into doing that because you never know what's, when, you, when you're going to be said yes and when you're going to be told no. Um, and it's frustrating for that because for these specific designs and for, let's be honest, every design I've submitted to a company in the past, I have always gone in with full expectations that something will be uh, not, uh, something will be accepted because I love what I've created and I love the concept I've come up with. But that is not always the case. And so it's important to be told no sometimes and encourages us to keep pushing forward and trying harder. Um, with that being said, I would really, really love a yes. <laughs> so wish me luck. I submitted, I don't remember, four or five designs. Um, and I love all of them very, very much. So I will be moving forward with them regardless of when this exact answer will be. But I would just love to be, for them to be used for this purpose. So. Anyway, wish me luck. I will know Friday of this week, October 8th, is when I'm supposed to find out if they're accepted or not. So I'll let you know regardless. And if they're not, I'll be more detailed with showing you swatches and things like that because I am excited about them. I, you know, would just love for them to be in this specific, accepted in this specific situation, I guess. So Anyway, that's something that's been in the back of my mind this past week, um, and then of course in this next week as well as it gets closer to the deadline. But 
Anyway, I hope you all have an amazing week. Let me know what you're working on in the comments below because I want to hear it. I want to hear what excites you if the comments aren't on because I know it's frustrating. Don't hesitate to send an email to thegracefultangle at gmail.com for any, anything, any collaborations that you'd like to do, any um, questions that you may have, comments you may have. I That email is always open. I respond as quick as I can usually within 24 hours so just keep that in mind i can't check you know every single minute of course but i do respond as quickly as i can um but anyway thank you so very much for watching this week's episode don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and check out all of the links in the description box below until next time happy making bye